Welcome to Tala Talks NICU, and now we're going to be talking about the examination of the rest of the face. And we're going to start with the nose. So obviously, look at the nose, make sure that it's kind of symmetrical, and that there are two nostrils. If you're worried at all about any sort of obstruction in the nasal passages, then you can get a feeding tube and pass it back down through the nostrils and make sure that it does pass all the way down into the stomach or the throat. Remember though that the nasal passages are much narrower in babies and generally after birth, after they've kind of swallowed and inhaled all the fluid and the gunk from delivery, they can be really, really snorty immediately after birth for the first couple of days as well. So a lot of parents complain about this. They're really concerned that the nasal passages are blocked, but really it's just the baby's trying to get all that extra gunk out. This also may cause babies to sneeze a lot after birth. And honestly, I didn't even realize how much babies sneeze until I had my own. While you're examining the nares, make sure that there's no nasal flaring, which is the edges of the nostrils kind of flap in and out. That could be a sign of respiratory distress. So if you see that, make sure that you document it and look for other concerning signs with the lungs. Next, you want to examine the mouth really well. And one of the most important things that you're looking for is a cleft. And a cleft is basically a straight line of missing tissue in the roof of the mouth. So kind of like the roof of the mouth is just missing like either the bone or the tissue at the back of the mouth. So you really have to look for this because they can be really subtle. So get your gloved finger and feel all the way back to the roof of the mouth, all the way back, seeing to make sure that the roof of the mouth is completely made. Then be sure to check all the gums of the mouth. Sometimes babies are actually born with teeth. So if they do have a tooth, then make sure it's not really wobbly. If it's really wobbly, then it has to go out because we'd worry that the baby would choke on it and obviously that could be really dangerous. Babies often have little lesions called Epstein pearls on the hard palate, so kind of like on the roof of their mouth, and they're like tiny one to two little millimeter white cysts. Sometimes parents can actually ask you about this. They're completely normal. Then also make sure that the tongue is moving really well and there isn't a shortened frenulum or there's no tongue tie. Generally, if a baby can get the tip of its tongue past the gums, then the baby doesn't have tongue tie, generally. Also, make sure that the movement of the lips and the mouth is completely symmetrical. Sometimes when the baby cries, then one side of the mouth will hang down lower. This could signal a problem with either the muscles or the nerves. So again, be sure to notice this and document it. It's much easier to pick up when the baby's actually crying. At birth, babies should have a good rooting as well as sucking reflexes in term babies. So a rooting reflex is when you kind of stimulate the side of the mouth, the cheek, then the baby will like move towards that area trying to kind of eat whatever you're putting there. That's the rooting reflex. The sucking reflex is that if you put something in the baby's mouth, then the baby will suck on it immediately. After you've kind of looked at the face and everything, do a really good examination of the neck. Make sure that there are no cysts or bumps anywhere kind of all over the neck. Also, make sure that the head is midline and the baby isn't kind of favoring one side. This is called torticollis and it can basically mean that the muscles on one side are more contracted than the other. The sooner that this is caught, the better. And a lot of times we can just get over it with physical therapy. The clavicles or the collarbones can actually be broken during delivery, like pretty commonly. So make sure that you run your fingers all the way down the collarbones, looking for little bumps or areas where it feels like the bone is disconnected because that could actually indicate a fracture. And while you're in that general area, check the nipples of the baby. So often you can feel like breast buds beneath the nipples of the baby. And sometimes you can even see like a little bit of a white milky discharge. This is because the babies have been exposed to all the maternal hormones and it is completely normal. Right, go watch the skin examination video now. Thank you for being here.